Hello, everyone. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, short lightning talk on Python server procedures. Hopefully, we have not promised you too much. And as also, this is, a call, uh, this is a talk where none of us would be upset if you get your smartphones out, because there is a magic QR code that uh, enables you to sign up for this feature uh, once it's available and provide us feedback on your needs and uh, uh, yeah, what, what, what you can use it for. So yeah, let's jump right into it. Uh, just a quick uh, audience check. Who of you are familiar with store procedures, has used store procedures? All right, all right, good crowd, good crowd. Um, just to get you everyone on the same page, uh, just a quick one, what are store procedures? Really quick. Um, it's a, essentially a sequence of instructions. Um, let's think of it like a create table and a delete table, maybe a different one. Um, and you give that whole thing a name. Um, and that is important because now you have encapsulated all those instructions, uh, which allows you to start in a catalog um, and in turn allows you to share it with other users. Uh, so now you have this encapsulated reusable logic um, and you can do a few more things. Um, you can have parameters for those one, input and output, both are optional, it's critical that both are optional, um, and a bit of logic between it, like control flow logic, exception handling, and so on. All right, so this is uh, more or less a sort of procedure. How is that different to a function? Well, what the sort of procedure can do and a function cannot do is it can alter the state. So for instance, um, it can create a table uh, and after the procedure finishes, um, the, the, stable is, uh, the table is still created, still there. Uh, if you delete it within a procedure, it will be gone afterwards. Um, so this is a critical, uh, critical difference uh, for functions. All right, um, super simple in a nutshell to get everyone on the same level. Why should you care? Well, there are a number of very cool use cases um, for stored procedures. Uh, one, you can do a couple of administrative tasks that you cannot do otherwise. So you can really have a uh, super sophisticated logic um, written as a stored procedure. This might be super specific for you, so it's not provided out of, out of the box, uh, but you can do things like, okay, you can have uh, a stored procedure for your migrations, how you migrate tables. You can have one for what uh, we label data integrity checks. Databricks recently uh, introduced the ability to have primary and foreign keys and to also use those for optimizations, but in order to do so, um, it must be really unique uh, so it, it has to have the uniqueness property. Um, you could write a store procedure to check that and make sure that the optimizations work and the data is well formatted. Um, you can use it for like implementing custom audits where you go through your table, see what's important, see where you have PII data, and then dump that into an, into an audit table. All right, so that's one class of uh, use case. The other one is customized permissions. Um, what it is, is essentially, instead of giving a privilege, like a create table to a user, um, maybe you want to refine that permission. Um, say that you want to enforce certain naming schemas uh, or that the table is always uh, created in a certain location. What you could do with store procedures is you create a store procedure. Within the store procedure, you do a couple of validation checks. You check that the name is well formatted of the table. It lands in the right catalog and schema. Um, it is stored, let's say, as blob storage somewhere in the format you want to. Um, and then you grant users their permission to that store procedure instead of giving them permission to, a, like, granting them create table. So this way you can ensure that users can still do a create table, but much more restrained and, like, tailored to your needs. All right. Um, and third, but not, certainly not least, the store procedure allows you to up-level your users, especially SQL users, as well as workloads or tools like Power BI. Um, because now you have a component um, that you can reuse, you can share it with users who are not that familiar in Python, but they get now access to this powerful procedure that they can use to get their work done without having to care how it was actually implemented in the first place. Um, and because it's in Python, you can like stand on the shoulder of a giant and reuse uh, existing Python libraries to like achieve more with less work. All right, um, this is some of the use cases that we heard. There might be more. And this is uh, where the, the crowdsourcing aspect of this talk comes in. Um, please provide us feedback. This is a Google form where you can sign up for the upcoming preview of this feature, but as well uh, as provide us feedback on, hey, what are your private store procedure use cases? What are the capabilities you need? So we can make the right decisions um, to get you the, 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 the right feature into your hands as, as soon as possible. All right, uh, so hopefully this was a good motivation of uh, what Python stores procedures can do for you. And now I would hand it over to Allison to show you more how all of this works on Databricks. 
Thank you, Jacob, for the awesome introduction here. All right. Okay, so now let's dive into the details of using Python storm procedures on Databricks. All right, so let, now let's start by writing a simple procedure to calculate the area of a rectangle. This is just a simple example to give you a sense on how to create a procedure. And we will dive into more complex examples later. So you can start by specifying the name of the procedure. It can also be structured using the three-level namespace, which includes the catalog, schema, and procedure name. And next, you can define the parameters of the procedure. So there are three modes for the parameters. The in mode is for the input parameters. So it's the default parameter mode, so you don't have to always specify it. So for our example, the length and width of the rectangle are input parameters. So the next one is the out mode. The out mode is the output parameters. And in our example, the calculated area of the rectangle is an output parameter. So the third mode is the in-out mode. So as the name suggests, it combines both the input and the output functionality. So example here would be an accumulator that aggregates results over multiple execution of the procedure. And then you can specify the programming language of the procedure, which in this case is Python. And last but not least, you can write the actual Python code. So for our uh, rectangle area calculation, the Python code will compute the area based on the input parameters and update, update the accumulator. So once a procedure is created, you can invoke it using the call command. So all you need is to provide the necessary input parameters used now as a placeholder when calling the procedure. And you can also use named arguments here. So the return value of the procedure is one row with multiple columns. And each column represents an out or in-out parameter specified in the procedure definition. And it's also very easy to reference these parameters in the procedure body. So you don't need any special syntax here. You can just treat them as normal Python variables and reference, it, reference them using their names. So there's also no need for a return statement. The procedure will get and return the values assigned to the out and in-out variables just make sure they have the correct type as specified in the procedure definition. And just like tables and functions, procedures are also secured by Unity Catalog. So you can easily manage who gets to call your procedures using the grant and the revoke command. Okay, so now we've seen how to create and use procedures. You might be thinking, why do I need a procedure to calculate the area of a rectangle? Like, why can't I just use functions? That's a great question. So what really sets procedure apart and make them incredibly powerful is the ability to access Spark session in the procedure. So this means we can run SQL queries and use PySpark and Pandas on Spark API to perform any data transformations and analysis right within the procedure. So we can encapsulate the data processing logic into reusable components and be able to invoke them in any UC-enabled compute. Isn't that amazing? Okay, so now let's look at a more complex example. So say we want to create some tables, but before creating a table, we want to verify that the name of the table follows a specific pattern. So in this case, the name must start with test. So we can use a procedure to check if the table name follows a convention. So if the name is valid, you can then use the implicit Spark session exposed in the procedure body to execute the SQL command and to create the table. So once a procedure is created, we can execute it from any using enabled compute. So we can execute it in a Databricks notebook or in a SQL warehouse. This means that we can integrate and use procedures whenever we need them providing a powerful way to manage data operations. So here is another example that encapsulates a simple ETL pipeline in the procedure. So first, it loads data from a source table into a Spark data frame. And then it performs some simple transformations using the PySpark API and writes the transformed data back to a target delta table 
And now you can just execute it anytime you need, just by providing the source and the target table names. So we'll show you more examples later. So there are two key elements here behind Python procedures. The first one is that procedures are secured by Unity Catalog Lake Guard, to which allows you to run user-defined code in a sandbox environment. So this provides full isolation and enhanced security to run your procedures. Second, the Spark session in the procedure is powered by Spark Connect. So it decouples the client application from the server and making the client very lightweight and enables more flexible and efficient execution of the procedure. Okay, so now it's the most exciting demo time. So let's build some intuition using a basic demo. Okay, so here is the demo for Python Storm procedures. So let's use Unity Catalog before creating and using any of the procedures here. So here is the simple example to create a procedure to calculate the area of a rectangle. So we can see there are input parameters, output parameters, and the in-out parameter here. And we define the language to be Python. And here is the actual procedure body. So let's create the procedure. And we can um, use the call command to execute this storm procedure. So here we have the name of the procedure, the input and output variables, and we can execute this call command. And here is the output. So it has two columns. And we can also use the call command with the name the parameters. So here we pass in the name of the parameter and the values, and we can execute it to get the same result. So for the next example here, let's create a procedure to check the table name before creating a table. So we can have the control flow logic in the procedure body to verify that if the name of the table follows a specific pattern. And we can use the Spark session in the procedure to execute a SQL statement to create the table. Now let's invoke the procedure to create a table called test table one. And you can see that the table is successfully created. And if we give it a embedded name, the procedure will fail with an exception. So let's also try it out in SQL Warehouse, where we can create a new table called test table two and invoke this procedure. So that now let's verify that the table is actually created. So we can select from the new table and we can see the same result. And next, let's move to the ETL example. So it basically performs an ETL operation to transform the input source table to the target table. So here we can use the Spark API to load the source table and transform the source table using the PySpark API and write the transformed data frame into a Delta table. Okay, so now we can create a source table uh, with two columns and insert some data into the source table And let's invoke the ETL procedure to do the transformation. Okay, so we can see some Spark jobs here. And if we select from the target table, we will see the corresponding output data frames. Okay, so we can also try it out with SQL Warehouse. And let's invoke this procedure and it worked. Our last example is to validate the primary key constraints of a table. So first, let's create a table with a primary key column called department ID. So the primary key and foreign key constraints are not enforced, but what if we want to validate them before performing certain actions? So here we can create a procedure to check if the primary key constraints are valid 
in a given table by querying the duplicate rows, and we can return the result back to the output parameter. So let's create the procedure, and we can invoke the procedure on the departments table, and it should not have any duplicated keys. So next, let's insert a duplicate rows to the table. And if we invoke this storm procedure again, you, you can see that it's filling with duplicate rows. All right, that's the demo. All right, thank you, Allison. Um, I think this is super impressive. It's also super powerful. It's essentially supercharges your warehouse to also execute Python code with PySpark support. Um, you can do a lot more things, not only you, all your users, because it's shareable in Unity Catalog. It's secure in Unity Catalog, so you can govern who can access it and who cannot. Um, again, to recap, write your stored procedures for administrative tasks, for customized permissions, to really uplift users and workloads. If there's anything more, if you want to be part of the private preview, if you want to join this journey, please scan the QR code um, and yeah. Please sign up for the private preview. We cannot guarantee spots, but we will provide feedback to every. We will reach out to, to every one of you. Um, like and don't take it only for dice. Um, we're here. We won't be gone. Uh, reach out to us anytime. We have some brain dates available if you want to chat one-on-one -on -one about this. Um, but if you have any other questions, any other feedback, we're happy to talk to you, happy to jump on a call. You can reach us by email, uh, python minus storage minus procedures at databricks.com. And we hope you liked it. We hope you will consider Python store procedures and we hope you will build really amazing things um, on Databricks for your users and uh, make the most of it. Thank you. Thank you.